Hello and welcome back to another episode of Hidden Video Game Details, the series that aims to show you things that you may not have known about your favourite games so that you can look really clever in front of your friends. In today's episode, we discover a heartbreaking story in Red Dead Redemption 2, we take playground flirting to the next level in Bully, and we need to have a word with Isaac about his posture in Dead Space. Before that though, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Acer and NVIDIA, who have kindly sent me their all-new Predator Helios 300 laptop. The Helios 300 drops you right into the game, with everything you need to dominate the opposition on a blisteringly fast 144Hz display. Combine that with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 and a 10th gen Intel Core i7 processor, and you have a laptop that will deliver, on average, over 90 frames per second on the latest games at 1080p Ultra settings. Of course, with the Helios being powered by NVIDIA's 3060 laptop GPU, you'll also get access to all of the benefits that come with owning an NVIDIA GPU. That means awesome features like DLSS, which boosts your performance using the dedicated artificial intelligence cores, commonly referred to as tensor cores, that are only found on RTX GPUs. And NVIDIA Reflex technology, which, in supported games, lowers your system latency so your games feel more responsive than ever before. Combine all of those features and more with NVIDIA's excellent ray tracing technology, and you have a laptop that will make games both look and feel awesome. To see what else the Helios 300 has to offer, and maybe treat yourself to an awesome early Christmas present, click the link in the description now. Not only will you be bagging yourself a monster of a laptop, but you'll also be supporting this channel in the process. Once again, a huge thank you to Acer and NVIDIA for sponsoring today's video, and without further delay, let's get started. So first up, let's briefly revisit a detail that we featured in the last episode of this series. In that video, we found out that when Fuse picks up the 3030 repeater, he will do so with some serious style. Now, my theory was that Fuse was so familiar with the 3030 because it was made on the same planet that he is from that being the planet of Salvo, but I wasn't sure. Well, a few of you pointed out that if you ping the 3030 when playing as Fuse, he will in fact confirm this theory. 3030 repeater here, Salvo's finest, except for old Fusey, of course. Just 3030 repeater here. Oh, I was practically raised by these beauties. You little ripper. You beauty. So along with a couple of pretty funny lines when picking up the gun, Fuse will also acknowledge that he grew up with the gun. The backstory of the legends in Apex is one of my favourite parts of the game, so if you know of any other cool interactions with weapons, just like this one, then please let me know. Next up is the soon to be remade Dead Space 1. Now despite the poop hitting the fan pretty much from the word go in Dead Space, Isaac and the team are pretty relaxed when boarding the Ishimura. I mean, as relaxed as you can be when boarding an abandoned spaceship. This can actually be seen in the way that Isaac stands during this part of the game. As you can see, he's standing up straight without a care in the world. However, once the aforementioned poop does hit the fan, Isaac will now be hunched over as he is visibly terrified of what's to come. It's a very subtle but cool detail that is definitely going to lead to back problems for Isaac further down the line. Now, in the last episode of this series, we discovered that Satisfactory has an arachnophobia mode that turns the game's spiders into cats, with many of you commenting that the cats are actually scarier than the spiders. Well, today's details from Satisfactory aren't scary, but they do require some pretty persistent mouse clicking. First, if you repeatedly click on the power graph of any device that has one, this will happen. So your violent clicks have resulted in you being reported to HR. The treatments suggested don't sound too promising either, with anger management, therapy and exposure to dangerous substances being suggested. The other satisfactory detail requires some serious clicking. If you approach the molecular analysis machine and repeatedly try to click the scan hard drive button, and I do mean repeatedly, this one took me ages to record, this will eventually happen.
So it seems our persistent clicking caused the machine to become self-aware and ask some pretty deep questions. Well, it's either that or there is an actual human sitting in the machine. I guess we'll never know. Up next is the excellent Bully with a detail that you definitely shouldn't try yourself. Now, despite the name of the game, Bully is actually about stopping bullies, not becoming one. But that doesn't mean you can't stray to the dark side once in a while. Whenever you try to antagonize a boy from behind, Jimmy will give him a wedgie. Standard school ground behavior. Well, if you do the same to a girl, this happens instead. <laughs> what the hell? You really are silly. <laughs> what the really hell? Are silly. So instead of giving the girls a wedgie, Jimmy opts to pinch their bums. As I said, best not to try this one yourselves. So one of my favourite type of video game detail is continuity. Take Halo Reach for example. A sniper rifle is fired in a cutscene, and then when you take control of that character, he has the same amount of bullets missing from the rifle. Don't get me wrong, it's nothing mind blowing, but it is something that can be easily overlooked, so I always appreciate it. Well, today's example of this detail can be found in Call of Duty Black Ops 1. During the defector mission, Woods will use a Dragon's Breath Spaz 12 to pump two shells into a couple of bad guys before throwing you the gun. As you can see, once the gun is in your hand, and the SPAS-12 is missing two shells that were fired by Woods. As I said, it's a detail that could be very easily overlooked. Now, a problem that real-world skaters the world over face is that they're often seen as a bit of a nuisance. Rightly or wrongly, people associate skateboarding and skateboarders with antisocial behaviour. And for what it's worth, I'm not one of those people. I usually point out skateboarders to my children because they both think it's cool. However, in Skate 3, you can behave in a way that is very hard to defend. In the 2010 classic EA skating sim, you can repeatedly barge into innocent bystanders, in some cases even knocking them over. Well it turns out that people are only willing to take so much before they finally snap and do this. So repeatedly harassing passers-by will cause your skater to be tased. I mean, it's a bit extreme, but you can't say that you didn't ask for it. Now, considering I was surprised to feature one detail from WWE 2K20, you can imagine how surprised I must be having featured the game in the last three episodes of this series, but once again, here we are. Now, a feature that has been in the WWE games for quite a while now is the ability to look under the ring for weapons. Usually, when you do this, you can select the weapon you want your wrestler to grab. However, there are a couple of wrestlers in WWE 2K20 that aren't given this option, and instead will pick up their signature weapon. For example, when looking for a weapon when playing a Triple H, he will grab his trusty sledgehammer, Sting will reach for his legendary baseball bat, and Gentleman Jack Gallagher, a wrestler who is nowhere near as well known as the previous two, will pull out his signature umbrella. It's a really nice touch. So the final detail for today's video comes from Red Dead Redemption 2, and like a lot of the details in this excellent game, it's a detail that even if you've completed the entire game story, you may still have missed it. When riding through West Elizabeth, there is a chance that this will happen. See that? That was dead down there. Must have gone off the cliff. Yep. I think he's from that uh, cabin up the way there. Poor bastard. Well, uh, guess I'll tell the sheriff when I get to town. So a man calls your attention to a dead body lying below. If you decide to hop down and take a closer look, you can find a photo of an unidentified woman. Further investigation of the area reveals a marriage certificate belonging to James Payton and Mildred Barr. So it's safe to assume the woman in the photo is Mildred and James is the unlucky dead guy. If you explore the area a little further, you can find a house with packages and flowers piled up outside. If you inspect the letter on the porch, it's revealed that the letter is actually from Jim, who has left his house to pick up Mildred to bring her to their new home. 
Of course, we know he didn't make it. What's really cool is, if you wait for 24 hours and then revisit the same house, a new letter will be on the porch. This time it's from Mildred, who is wondering where Jim is, as her bags are packed and waiting by the door for her new husband's arrival. The letter ends with Mildred seemingly believing that Jim has decided to call the whole thing off, which makes this already tragic story that little bit sadder. So that's it. If you enjoyed this video, then leaving a like is really appreciated. Remember, if you are a fan of Easter eggs, secrets, and tiny details in games, then perhaps consider subscribing as that's what this channel is all about. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll speak to you all soon.